So with this channel, I have a big pile of scripts just sitting around that I may or may not ever actually get around to making a video about. I bring this up because I was digging through that pile recently and found one that I had written late last year during a period of time where I was living in an apartment that turned out to have a gas leak. A gas leak conveniently localized mostly to my bedroom. You know, that place where I would sleep and breathe for long periods of time. Anyway, after posting a poll over on Patreon to see which video my patrons would be most interested in having me tackle next, it turns out they picked the script where my methane-addled brain somehow forgot the game part of this channel's gimmick. So, goodbye Steam, hello Internet Movie Database. Viewers, I welcome you to the world of vegan film analysis. Today we begin a descent through the IMDB Top 100 User Ranked Films of All Time where I intend to watch each and every movie and then subject it to my usual discourse. Okay, it's time for one of our favorite games on the show called What If It Was Vegan? But how do you determine if a movie is vegan? Well, we're gonna watch each of these films up until the point that something happens on screen that can be considered non-vegan within the context of the events that we're witnessing. When that moment occurs, bam, movie over, into the trash. Eat a steak, garbage. Drink milk? Nah. Hurt an animal? Disgusting! Think of it like the vegan Bechdel test. Except not devised by a talented and influential artist from the lesbian community, but rather a weird vegan hermit strung out on gas fumes. One caveat, I'm giving a pass to most forms of human-on-human -human violence. I don't think anyone would rightfully consider, you know, assault, murder, etc. to be ethically vegan. But if we just omit violence in all its forms, we're precluding, I would say probably about 85% of all fictional media ever produced by mankind. I'm gonna try to put my focus on human-to-animal interaction here. Oh, also, this uh, video will very likely be riddled with spoilers to a bunch of different movies. I would, I would hope that's obvious. So, with the introductions out of the way, let's begin. Released in 1994 and currently the highest user-rated film of all time on IMDb, The Shawshank Redemption tells the story of two imprisoned men who bond over a number of years, finding solace and eventual redemption through acts of common decency. Wow, good for them. Let's hope they afford that same decency to animals as well. So, we open up with Andy Dufresne in his car, grabbing a gun and bottle of liquor. None of that's any concern to me, because I'm too busy trying to see if he's got leather seats or a leather watch band or something. This quickly became a point of concern. I can see a bunch of things that might be leather, you know, just out of focus. And I'm betting if I had like an ultra 4K Blu-ray restoration of this movie, I might even be able to verify with certainty. But with my current resolution, it wasn't until exactly the five minute mark into the film where we get a shot of Andy stepping out of his car in fully visible leather shoes. Now, running with the fact that this movie is based in the late 1940s and Andy Dufresne is a well-to-do banker, we can, in my opinion, reasonably assume that those are animal leather shoes. However, this is what I'm going to call implicitly non-vegan. As of this time code, the movie has failed our little test as far as I'm concerned, but unless Morgan Freeman cuts in and directly narrates, Andy Dufresne made those shoes himself from a beautiful young heifer whose skull he mercilessly caved in with a rock. Until that happens, you know, something in the scene confirms that it's non-vegan leather. We'll keep watching until we get evidence a bit more concrete to be outraged over. Anyway, Andy goes to trial for the murder of his wife and her lover, it is falsely convicted, sentenced to two consecutive life sentences, and then taken to Shawshank State Prison, where we get some, frankly, quite speciesist language from the other inmates upon his arrival. I sure do love that winning horse of mine, though. So there's this moment early on at the parole hearing of the other main character, Ellis Redding, where there might be some milk or cream on the desk back here. Like, you know, for coffee. But there once again isn't enough visual clarity for me to say so with certainty. There are a ton of other possible animal-based products after this, but it's not until nearly the 21 minute mark that we get a prison cafeteria scene, at which point I swiftly equip my Metroid Prime vegan visor and begin scanning for any offending perpetrators. And well, I'm going through this scene with a fine tooth comb, but I mean there's what looks like potatoes, bread, hell those might be eggs, but I can't really tell. 
a lot of unidentifiable gray mass. Everything here is so purposefully portrayed as off-putting that it's totally indistinguishable in terms of our concerns. Wait, hold up, we got something. Okay, so I say finding a grub in your food isn't non-vegan. There's some argument to be made about properly storing your perishables so as to not grant pests access to them in the first place, but that's not Andy's job here. He's not seeking the little guys as a food source. I mean, when I go jogging, do I become non-vegan when I inevitably swallow a few gnats that fly into my mouth? No, I... Oh wait, what? Oh, you're saying... So I'm not? I'm not, I'm not a vegan anymore. Oh. Alright, well damn, sorry. Later guys. Anyway, the question in this situation, are the characters on screen purposefully consuming an animal? No. Andy picks it out of his food and- Are you going to eat that? And, and planned on it. Do you mind? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, hold up, we got something here. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so this guy does want to eat the mealworm. <laughs> Holy sh- Well, yeah, this moves the film from implicit to explicitly non-vegan the moment that he eats the- No, no, oh. no, no, no. Hmm. Man, this scene is taking a lot of turns on us. Um, to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to weigh in on this one. I think I'll just let you all duke it out in the comments for me while I continue on with the movie and look for something a bit more damning. A few other implicitly non-vegan things can be found scattered throughout the film, like soap, which at this point in history would likely contain at least some amount of animal tallow. There are also leather gloves, leather or vellum bound books, beer, which can often be non-vegan due to clarifying agents such as gelatin or isinglass. They also watch a movie at one point, which, fun fact, film reel is made with gelatin, which is made from animal bones. There's like no commercially available vegan film, especially not in the 1940s. So <laughs> ironically, any of the movies in this list that weren't shot digitally are actually already guilty of being non-vegan from the get-go. I mean, I, I see a lot of debate even amongst vegans on this matter. But all of that aside, at the 46 minute and 14 second mark, we see a man riding on horseback. Horseback riding is not vegan, and therefore we have transitioned from implicit to explicit non-veganism, so we must immediately shut the movie off. Up next... Released in 1972, The Godfather tells the story of an aging patriarch to an organized crime dynasty in post-war New York City as he transfers control of his clandestine empire to his reluctant youngest son. Now, anyone that's been vegan for a while can probably pick up on a red flag when it comes to this movie. That's right, they're Italian. As far as restaurants go, you know, Indian, Chinese, Thai, Spanish, Mexican, Greek, Ghanaian, you name it, I can usually find at least one thing on the menu that's already vegan, or is easily made such with minor alterations. Italian restaurants on the other hand? <laughs> My god, good luck. I don't have very high hopes going into this one. There's this nice opening monologue, and then just a few minutes before the camera zooms out to reveal the opening room proper, with a visibly leather chair. That's where we enter implicitly non-vegan territory. Immediately afterward, though, we cut to an Italian wedding. Just one of these events can put a butcher shop in the black for the rest of the year, like the meat. Oh my god. Uh-oh, that guy's got a camera. We've established that film isn't vegan, so the moment he snaps a pic, it's all over. Luckily, however, the movie cuts away just before we see it in action every time, or the Godfather himself shuts the prospect down personally. Grazie, Don Corleone. I'm honestly kind of surprised we don't see more food in this scene. All I can spot is some wine, which can be non-vegan for similar reasons to beer, and like, one orange, which that's fine. But we hit our big moment when Polygato here makes a comment about this being a silk purse. Twenty, thirty grand. In small bills, cash. In that little silk purse. Which, silk isn't vegan. It's made from boiling pupated silkworms. Also, immediately afterward, this guy throws him a bunch of cold cut sandwiches. Hey, Polly! I got two gabagoo! Gabagoo! Ah, it's a pretty boy, but you stupid jerk! So, yeah, this movie becomes explicitly non vegan here. Which is lucky for us, because at the 34 minute mark, we see an actual horse's severed head for the infamous, uh, you know, horse head scene. Yeah, that's a real head. Anyway. 2008's The Dark Knight. When the menace known as the Joker wreaks havoc and chaos on the people of Gotham, Batman must accept one of the greatest psychological and physical tests of his ability to fight injustice. Not quite all injustice though, I'm sure. 
the moment we see our first on-screen character, he's wearing a leather jacket, so that puts us in implicitly non-vegan territory from the get-go. We got some murder during the initial bank heist, but, you know, I said we're gonna give human-centered violence a pass. The Joker pulls off his caper, purposefully getting all his lackeys killed in the process, and escapes without a trace. We get this scene of criminals reacting to the ominous bat signal, which is... Why are these guys worried? Is Batman like a narc? Does he just do random petty drug busts? Anyway, we cut to the police station where, bam, six minutes and 47 seconds, Domino Sugar product placement. I initially thought this would be one of the many brands of sugar that is whitened with animal bone char. As discussed in my Bioshock series. But it actually looks like Domino Sugar varies depending on where it was manufactured. If it were made in, say, Yonkers, New York, for instance, it's vegan, as it uses ion exchange resin to you know, do all that stuff that the bone char would. So this isn't actually solid evidence to the movie being no longer vegan. But this milk right behind the sugar is. Hell, even if you say I'm making a leap to conclusion that that's milk, at seven minutes and 40 seconds, we see these thugs using dogs as a form of intimidation. I'm hungry. Animal labor, not vegan. Shutting it off, movie done. Hmm, three movies, just over 11 minutes. That seems fine for now. I've actually already scripted out and recorded vocals for the first 10 entries in this list, but editing around all the copyright stuff is a really tedious process, so I'll release this bit for now to see how much you all like the concept. As always, an enormous thank you to my wonderful patrons over on patreon.com forward slash poor dunce. We've made it all the way to 25 individuals, which means I'll soon be posting my super secret Satan recipe over there. It's evolved over time into a very potent state over the past three years. Definitely don't want to miss out. Anyway, thanks for watching.